Here we're given a differential equation and we're asked to do a couple of things. We're asked to solve it. Uh, y as a function of x, we want an explicit solution. We want to graph the solution. We'll use uh, dfield, which is a nice uh, free online um, applet. And we're asked to define the interval of validity uh, once we've solved it. In other words, x is in some interval where it could be a closed interval or open interval or closed on one end, open on the other. This is the differential equation. Uh, y prime equals 3x squared minus e to the x over quantity 2y minus 5. And the initial condition is y of 0 equals 1. Now instead of uh, watching me write all of this, I've, I've already got it all prepared and I'm going to highlight some of the key points as we go along to make things a little bit quicker. So immediately looking at the form of the differential equation, I should recognize it as separable. Okay, it should be a separable differential equation. Uh, I can immediately see that if I multiply 2y minus 5 on both sides and multiply dx on both sides, I will have the following integral down here. Uh, integrating that should be very, very easy to do. And once I integrate it, I've got plus c on this side, plus c on this side. Note, I'm just going to subtract the c. These two can be different. This is, you know, c1 and c2 is really what's going on, because they could be the same, they could be different, who knows. Uh, so I just put all the c's on one side, and I'll just call it big C. Now I want to use the initial conditions at this point. Uh, the initial conditions y of 0 equals 1. That means everywhere I see an x, I put 0. Everywhere I see a y, I put 1. I simplify that and I can find that c is equal to negative 3. Okay? And what I end up having, because remember the ultimate goal is to get y equals f of x, is this expression y squared minus 5y minus the quantity x cubed minus e to the x minus 3x right, equals 0. This, this thing right here is a quadratic equation in y. a is equal to 1, b is equal to negative 5, and c is equal to this entire thing right there. That's what c is equal to. And that's a. Just 1 times that. So I put this into the quadratic formula, right? I fill it in carefully. I do a little bit of simplification on top. Uh, I'll then do a little bit more algebra. I'll incorporate this 2 into the square root by squaring it. And then I've got a simplified form over here. I've got y equals plus minus 5 over 2. I'm sorry, y equals 5 over 2 plus minus the square root of 13 over 4 plus e to the third minus e to the x. And now we have a question. We want to know what is it? Is it plus or is it minus? Or is it both? I don't know. We have to use the initial condition again. Right? Well, not conditions, condition. So, once again, everywhere we see an x, we put 0. Everywhere we see a y, we put 1. And we solve this. Right? We go through and we do all the algebraic steps very, very carefully. And we end up with 1 is equal to 5 over 2 plus minus 3 over 2. Obviously, it's the minus because uh, 5 halves minus 3 halves equals 2 over 2, which is 1, right? So that tells us that the minus is the one we want. And our explicit solution is 5 halves minus the square root of 13 over 4 plus x to the third minus e to the x. That's our explicit solution. And this is going to be valid, right, wherever uh, 13 over 4 plus e to the third minus e to the x is greater than 0. You can do this in a variety of ways. You can do it with your handheld calculator. I use GeoGebra. Uh, you can type it into Wolfram Alpha and it will give you the interval. Um, I use GeoGebra and I got this interval. That's our interval of validity anywhere that x is between negative 1.44 uh, to uh, 4.63. That's uh, your interval. And for an image I used, again, this is um, a D field, and I get this very nice um, image. That's the, that's the solution curve. Okay. Uh, let's now show you some of the visualization tools. First of all, let's talk about how we got this using GeoGebra. Right? 
So let's go to GeoGebra and let's type in the equation um, f of x equals 13 over 4 and we want to add x to the third and then minus e to the x. There it is. And again I'll use GeoGebra's awesome stretchy dynamic zooming power to get a better visual of what this is. Already we can kind of estimate what our interval is going to be, but we can be even more precise. Uh, I can do y equals 0 in the input bar and notice that it's being highlighted, right? So if I want to find out where these things intersect, I can just type in the command intersect, object with an object. A is the line y equals 0, and then f of x is the function and that'll give me the first point. A second point it won't do via the, the text command, but I can easily go over and drag a point, see how that function becomes highlighted, and see how y equals zero becomes highlighted. So I have to wait till both of them are highlighted right there. Now they're both highlighted, and then click, and it will place a point B at the solution. And A and B are clearly labeled here. Um, I can hold, oh, actually I don't think I can. I have to do it individually right-click, go to Object Properties, Name and Value, right-click, go to Object Properties, uh, Name and Value, pretty simple to do. And there gives us our interval, negative 1.44 and 4.63. If you want more precision, you can go to Options, Rounding, and then I can round up to 15 decimal places. So if you're really so inclined, you can get this thing out to 15 decimal places and you know, 0.444517 if you're so inclined, if you want that many uh, integers, uh, if you want that many decimal places. Two or three is usually sufficient. Um, so there you go. That's one way of doing it. Uh, you may be wondering how I generated this picture. How did I get uh, this, this thing happening? This is pretty nice. So here's how I did it. I went to D field and P plane really really nice online Java applets. I clicked on D field and it brings up D field. I click OK. This window is my main action window where I'll be inputting all the commands. Now I want Y prime equals some function of X where X is my independent variable. Okay, So I'm going to type Y in here. Immediately D field will flip out and it will turn red and we'll say there's an error don't worry about that just delete that for the time being and make y your independent variable now you can go in and type the original differential equation right and that's just going to be 3 times x squared minus e to the x all of that is over 2 times y minus 5 right And, hmm, that's interesting. Oh, I'm sorry, y isn't the independent variable, x is. There we go. Much better. And now I can graph the phase plane. So there I've gone and graphed it. Now, when I plot this, right, graph the phase plane, I want to go and plot the initial values. So I have to go to Solution, Keyboard Input of Initial Value, and then when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 1. That's pretty convenient. Already set up right for me. So I'll click Solve, and it will solve part of it. And you'll see down here, it'll say Solving ODE with dot, dot, dot. Just tell it to stop solving it, because it's never going to get it. And then it'll complete this other part, you know, rough estimate. Okay. Now if I want to center this, I can do that by, you know, I can, I can put this thing more toward the center of my, my field just by uh, adjusting the minimum x, maybe make that like negative uh, 5, maximum x will be, I don't know, like 6 or something, right? And I'll graph, and then I'll just go to solve again, and file, stop ODE solver. And then I really don't need all this extra space, so maybe I'll do y from negative 1.5 to y equals 3. Negative 1.5 to y equals 3. 3 and I'll graph. Okay, I have to click solve again and window, I'm sorry, file stop ODE solver and there you can see it traced out pretty nicely. Okay, so that's how I would do all of this. There's another really nice program 
called winplot. I'll show you that in a moment. And with winplot, what we can do, minimize all this other stuff. What we can do with winplot, window, two-dimensional, equation, differential, dy, dx, and I can input the same thing, right, input the same differential equation, only this time I'm going to go a times x squared minus e to the x and b times y minus c, say, right, and then I'll click OK. And I will go to anim, which stands for animation, individuals, A, individual, B, individual, C. Now, if you'll notice, A, B, and C, right, A, B, and C are all set to zero. But if I change them around, I get a changing slope field. I don't know if you can see the slope field gradually changing as I as I change these values around. The other nice thing I can do is I can do one initial value problem, dy dx trajectory, so 1, 0, x is 1, y is 0, and click draw, and it will draw that for me. And then I can move the sliders around, and you'll see how that affects the differential equation, the, the solutions to this thing. So this program, Winplot, if you have Windows, definitely get this program. It's a fantastic, wonderful program, uh, and I highly recommend getting it. Now, I can also uh, click anywhere on the screen, and I will get solutions. And when I drag these sliders around, you will see them change with time, which I think is really nifty. So we've, we've already more than solved this differential equation. We're now exploring it qualitatively. Um, have fun with this. If you have any questions, uh, let me know. And I hope you found this uh, uh, useful and enjoyable. Take care.